What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering. I hope you're having a wonderful day, and I thank you for tuning in, whether you're watching here on YouTube or you're watching on Rumble or Odyssey or BitChute or maybe on Parler or Minds. I'm glad to have you, and I hope whatever platform you're watching on, today will be the day I earn your subscription. It'll just make finding my videos easier, and it will inflate my ego. Lord knows I need it. Now, Disney has been having one of the worst years, probably their worst year ever, uh, but there is a silver lining. New reporting out suggests that uh, Disney has now lost nearly $7 billion uh, due to lockdowns and people's um, and the Hollywood being closed down. So local reporting says Walt Disney Company loses more than $7 billion this year. This is out of Orange County, Florida. The Walt Disney Company said it lost more than $7 billion this year due to the coup. The loss, while not a huge surprise, means the recovery is still a long way off. Disney Parks, experiences, and products saw about $2.4 billion loss impact due to it during just the fourth quarter. The company announced during its earnings report Thursday. Park revenue for the fourth quarter decreased 61% to about $2.6 billion compared to the last fiscal year, Disney said. Segment operating results also decreased $2.5 billion to a loss of $1.1 billion. The total net adverse impact of the COOF on a segment operating income in the fourth quarter is expected to be $2.4 billion. The lower operating results for the fourth quarter were due to a decrease in both domestic and international parks, Disney said. However, capacity increased from 25% when the parks first reopened to about 35% now at Walt Disney World. That's in Florida. The California location remains closed. The company held a webcast Thursday in which the anniversary of the company's new streaming service, Disney Plus, which now has 73 million paid subscribers. And on the back of that is exactly why the stock actually managed to go up. Uh, quote saying, even with the disruption caused by the COOF, we've been able to effectively manage our businesses while also taking bold, deliberate steps to position our company for greater long-term growth, Disney CEO Bob Chipek said in a news release. The real bright spot has been our direct-to-consumer business, which is key to the future of our company. On the anniversary of the launch of Disney+, Plus, we're pleased to report that at the end of the fourth quarter, it has more than 73 million paid subscribers, far surpassing expectations. Now, a lot of people have pointed out it's it's very curious timing that uh, they chose to to launch their service. Very lucky timing uh, to be launching Disney Plus right before worldwide lockdown, but I won't go down that road. Um, during the earnings call, they announced that Walt Disney World generated enough revenue to cover costs this quarter. In Disney's last earnings call, the company said theme parks took a $5 billion hit after shutting down several months for the COOF. The company recently laid off 28,000 cast members at its theme parks in Orlando and Anaheim, and it did not say when it expects to ease social distancing and mask requirements uh, restrictions, but did say it's expecting to spend $1 billion next year just to stay open. One thing not discussed was if any more employees will be laid off. In September and October, Walt Disney World told the state it would lay off more than 17,000 people by the end of the year. Well, it's interesting to me because, you know, you have obviously everything going on with Hollywood. You know, Disney's not making any money really off big blockbuster releases. They're hoping to push that back into the future, but I still think that... Um, you know, theaters are just never going to be the same. There will be people that go back to the movie theater. I'm sure I will if there's a movie I really want to see. But make no mistake about it. There are sections of this population that will never go to another movie, will never go to another concert, will never go to an, another large gathering because of everything that's happened this year. And that's really a shame. Um, you know, Disney, you know, I, I would love to support them because I have so many fond memories of, of the theme park. But... Boy, they have, you know, I've really had my eyes opened in terms of the type of business decisions that they want to make. You know, uh, as for its film division, production delays to upcoming Marvel films such as Black Widow and The Eternals and continued widespread closure of theaters led to Disney pulling in just $1.6 billion, a drop of $1.7 billion from its $3.31 billion in 2019. So a 50% drop 
in cinema revenue. Additionally, the company's total revenue also suffered a significant drop, with Disney reporting only $14.7 billion in 2020 compared to its $19.1 billion in the same period last year. During the Thursday report, CEO talks about you know Disney Plus and how it's great, how it basically saved them. In a year that saw the departure of former CEO Bob Iger, perfect timing for him, and the furlough of roughly 100,000 workers, the direct laying off of 28,000 more, near universal condemnation of its tentpole Mulan remake, and the abysmal sales for its highly promoted Marvel's Avengers video game, these annual financial results are devastating, but ultimately unsurprising. Now, I don't know how much they had on the line for um, the Avengers video game, because this was not produced by them. Um, they had a license on it, so I don't know how much they even stood to like profit from it if and when it would have been successful. Um, now, in the, all these different spots, if you look at what Disney's been up to over the past year, you know, just a reminder, obviously, you had all their shenanigans with Mulan. Mulan was a disaster. Now, we don't know if Mulan would have done okay under normal under normal circumstances. I wonder if my, I don't know if you're seeing that, but my monitor just flicked on and off. I don't know if Disney would have, you know, been okay if Mulan would have done okay if the theaters were still open. I don't really know what the actual boycott would have done. But what I do think was hilarious was that Mulan still tanked in China. Mulan sold out the West uh, to appease China, and the Chinese didn't like the film. Now, I will say that, obviously, the company um, having massive, massive gains with Disney+. Plus. Disney on Thursday reported an 82% decline in quarter, uh, quarterly operating income. The result of steep losses at its uh Lockdown devastated theme park division and the postponement of major movie releases. But Wall Street had already decided that Disney's overall results for the quarter, the fourth in the company's fiscal year, would be apropos of nothing, said Todd Junger, an analyst of Sanford. Wrote in November 2nd report, investors are confident that Disney's theme park empire will come roaring back when the, the, uh, the, uh, how do I say this word now on YouTube? When the, um, when the shot is deployed um, and all they really care about, at least for the moment, is streaming, streaming, streaming. To that end, Disney said its flagship streaming service, Disney Plus, had 73.7 million subscribers as of October 3rd, surpassing the low end of its initial five-year goal of only after only 11 months. Well, they had some help, right? Worldwide global lockdowns certainly helped them. Um, now, Disney also owns Hulu, 36.6 million subscribers, up 27% from a year earlier, and an ESPN branded service of 10 million, triple the number of a year earlier. Uh, Disney will soon introduce Star, an overseas version of Hulu, uh, stocked with programming from Disney properties like ABC, FX, Freeform, and Searchlight. Streaming is not yet a profitable business for Disney so far. It loses the company in director consumer division totaled $580 million for the quarter, which was less than analysts feared. So they're still losing money. 80 million subscribers still losing money. Disney Plus profitability expected by 2024. Certainly will be accelerated uh, by more people being told to stay home. Disney shares rose roughly 5% in after hours trading in part because of overall results. Losses were 20 cents a share after adjusting for one-time items compared to per profit of $1.07 a year ago. They were better than investors expected. Disney shares have only declined 4% on the year. Disney faces an increasingly competitive streaming environment, HBO Max, CBS All Access, soon to be renamed Paramount Plus, Peacock, Apple TV, and are, are all determined to make inroads. Well, see, people are just gonna buy all of them. It, it, the, the Americans will just consume. They'll have 10 of these monthly subscription services and they'll only watch one or two of them at any given time. What streaming's done is it's turning back in to cable television where people are paying 15, 20, uh, I'm sorry, paying 50 to $100 a month and consuming $5 worth of content. Hopefully people will wake up and start trimming these because I just hate that people sign up and pay for this stuff and never use it. Uh, you know, I cut the cord 
a while ago, and then cutting the digital cord was actually even easier. Well, because I have a large boat parked out back on the pier, if there's anything I really want to see, there are ways to see these things. Now, it's very clear to us that new content ad subscriber Bob Chappick, Disney's chief executive, said on the earnings call, and he was very pleased with his recent premier access experiment with Mulan, which offered a Disney Plus premium for 30 bucks in September. He indicated that more Disney movies would be distributed that way. Something sure to send shivers through movie theaters' uh, spines. Look, I have no interest in paying 30 bucks to see a digital download. I have no interest in paying 20 bucks for almost any digital download. So we'll have to see how things work out. But apparently people are still positive on Disney, even though it's just hemorrhaging cash. I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you again real soon.